Good evening, everybody. It's a chilly, chilly, it's been a chilly, chilly week, but it's lovely to be together with you. Uh, it's been cold, although our minimums haven't been so low. It's our maximums that haven't got very max. And, uh, and slowly but surely, I've been feeling the effects of that cold. And there's been lots to do. And you can see I've had a haircut. Brenda's been uh, doing a great job of keeping me looking semi-decent. But we're well, and we hope that you are too. And a very warm greeting to you. Our check-in tonight is just very quick. Um, two main thoughts to share with you. The first is that we have our service on Sunday, and it's a communion service. And the message that I'm going to be reflecting on, I think, is an important one and, and one that, that I'd love you to begin chewing over even before we get to it. And that is that one of the most significant effects that the virus has had is that it's separating us from each other. And in all sorts of ways, I'm seeing how people are feeling the effects of that. Loved ones are in hospital and we can't be with them. Uh, we've had bereavements where we haven't been able to attend funerals. Um, we're not able to see our extended family. Many of us uh, are, are very alone and, and spending lots of time in solitude. And this has significantly impacted the way that we interact with each other to the extent that I've had a number of school teachers saying our kids have changed. They, you know, kids that were normally very interactive and, uh, and socially connected, now that they're back at school, are, are very much isolated. And, and so I want to wrestle with the importance of community and particularly community in the biblical context. And so communion is a great time for us to be thinking about that. So I want to urge you, join us on Sunday and if possible, uh, get up early and join us at 8.30 so that even though we can't be in the same room when we're taking communion, at least we're at the same time. But let's be God's people together and prioritize our time of worship and prioritize the thing that binds us together and that is our faith and our act of worship. So that's the first thing. The second thing that I want to talk about is that Sunday I preached on Acts 27, the, uh, the, the, the uh, Apostle Paul in the storm, and then my daily devo devotion this morning that, that I send out by email was on Jesus calming the storm. And I, I, I've been trying to put little pictures with each daily devotion, and so I looked at a number of pictures, and one of the pictures that I found took my breath away. It was not the picture that I included in the daily devotion. Instead, I wanted to keep that for tonight. And that's what we're, I'm going to spend the rest of this evening on, is just this beautiful painting by Rembrandt. Now, those of you that are regular at the church know that we have a beautiful painting of Rembrandt and the prodigal, the, of the prodigal, by Rembrandt of the prodigal son hanging in the church, and that has meant a great deal to many of us. And now this painting by Rembrandt of, of Jesus calming the storm on the Sea of Galilee really has grabbed my attention. So let's take a look at that beautiful painting. So I've switched you over to handheld video. I hope I don't make you too seasick as you watch this, but uh, here is the painting by Rembrandt, and I'm just going to zoom in on it a little bit with my computer. We've talked about being in the storm, and as I've been thinking through this this painting and, and, and the effects of the COVID-19 storm, one of the things that struck me is that many of us are possibly like this guy over here, uh, that, uh, and, and I think of our, our policemen and our medical people, they're in, on the front of things, they're pulling the ropes tight, they're fixing the mast, they're holding on to the sails, they're trying to do whatever they can to, to make a difference and, and, and impact uh, or, or, or try and preserve life and, and, and doing the best that they can. And so we have people who respond to the crisis in this way. Um, the danger there in is that uh, it can be a little bit of, of doing things by our, by our own strength. 
and trying to do everything we can with, with no reference to Christ at all. Each of them is so focused on their own task, they're not looking to Jesus at all. They're really just relying on their own strength. Then we've got this guy over here, and he's kind of just shell-shocked. He's lost. He's not quite sure. He's focused on the waves or something in the distance, but something's got him badly rattled. This one has got his eyes partly on Jesus, partly on the storm. His head is tilted to one side. I think he's thinking, he's reflecting. And he's holding the, the rudder. And maybe it's important to, to realize that uh, if, if we're going to navigate our way through this time, we've got to have one eye on the Lord and then the other eye on our circumstances. Uh, over there, and let me just highlight him with the mouse, uh, the commentators on the painting have suggested that this is John and that he is the one disciple who is responding with faith. He's bowed down to Jesus' feet waiting to see what Jesus can do. There's uh, no need to explain what this guy is going through. He's just absolutely overwhelmed and and is even being physically affected by the storm. And uh, I think that happens to some of us. This guy is bewildered. He's just not sure what's happening. And then these two are angry. Jesus, don't you care if we drown? What are you going to do? Can't you see that, that everything's going crazy here? This person seems just to be in complete denial. He's just looking inward and he seems completely disconnected from the situation. And so those are some of the, the, the feelings and the emotions that, that we're feeling in this storm and in this crazy storm time. And I think at, at some time we've been any one and maybe even all of these people here on the boat. But have a look at how Rembrandt portrays Jesus. And I'm still wrestling with some of what is being portrayed there. On the one hand, there, there is a, a look in Jesus' face of, why are you yelling at me? Don't you think I've got this under control? Another is just inviting them to to, to stop yelling and stop panicking and just put their trust in him. There is not a wrinkle on his face, not a sign of worry, just absolute peace in this. And he's been asleep in the storm because he knows that God has a plan, that God is at work, that the circumstances won't have the final say. And maybe that's where we need to end tonight, is to say that as the storm comes in, as, as we hear of the numbers going up, as we hear of the changes in the plans for getting children back to school, we recognize that while things are changing, 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 and while the wind keeps coming and the waves keep tossing, and while people around us may react in all sorts of ways from frantic activity to complete disconnectedness to trying to steer and, and have faith as well, maybe the best thing for us to do is to, to join John and trust in Christ, to know that he is the one who will calm the storm. And in Mark's account of the calming of the storm, there are three megas. There is the mega storm, as Mark describes it. And then when Jesus gets up and he rebukes the storm and he says, quiet, be still. Mark says there was a mega calm. And then the third thing that happened was a mega fear, a mega respect, a mega awe. As the disciples realized that Jesus is Lord over the storm. Let's pray. Father God in heaven, we come to you in the midst of a busy week and we admit, Lord, that we have felt like some of these disciples. Some of us have been frantically working. Some of us are just staring at the waves. Some of us feel like running and hiding. 
Some of us are mad at you, Lord. We don't understand what you're doing and, 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 and it doesn't make sense to us. But Lord, you're in our boat. You're with us. We're not alone. And we are so grateful for that. And we ask you, Lord, guide us, carry us, be with us. We need you in our boat, Lord, and we need to see you clearly. So help us to be like that disciple at the tiller, or maybe that disciple kneeling down in worship. Help us to keep our eyes on you, even as we face the storm. In Jesus' name. And so folks, that's it from me. I pray that God would be with you. I'm looking forward to seeing you on Sunday. Good night and God bless.